What's going on, traders, and welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Watchlist. In the Weekly Watchlist, I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on the tickers over here on the left. We have the broad market comprised of SPY, the Qs, and IWM. After that, we look at some companies. We have Apple, Netflix, Tesla, Alibaba, Facebook, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Amazon. The question on everyone's mind right now is will it continue selling or will it stop? And that's sort of what we try to answer in this video as you'll see. But one thing I want to point out which I didn't mention in the recording of the broad market analysis is that we need to determine whether or not Friday's candles are essentially oversold bounces and temporary bounces, what some people might call a dead cat bounce, and we'll see another leg to the downside. Or are these bounces the start of something new? Are they going to start a new rally to the upside? Is this enough consolidation? So keep that in the back of your mind as I'm talking about some of these things. I don't explicitly mention it in the broad market analysis, but again, that's one thing we have to consider. All right, so obviously the question on everyone's mind is whether or not the selling will continue coming into this month or the year, really, or are we going to see some sort of bounce here? And just to sort of address that, no one really knows. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know. We can make educated guesses based on some of the information that we have, uh, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know like, yes, we are going to continue to go lower or yes, we are going to bounce here. We'll make some educated guesses throughout the video. Uh, but again, I just wanted to put that out there. So starting off on the monthly chart, since we did close a monthly bar, I wanted to give us a little bit of perspective here, starting off and dr by drawing a trend line. I've essentially cleared all drawings from the chart since we're sort of back into uh, uncharted territory after all this selling. So we have the anchor point, touch one, two, almost three here. Uh, and you can see that we have a little ways to go if we want to get back down into this support trend line. So that's one thing, one indicator to me that would say that, you know, should we see some more potential pullback? This is an area of the chart that I'm looking for some support to come into play. Maybe the selling starts to slow down as we approach that level. It's sort of coinciding with this monthly 50 SMA, which I did brighten up. So if you guys can see that much easier now, uh, leave me a thumbs up or let me know down below in the comments section and I will leave it in this color. So zooming in and getting a little more nuanced on this monthly chart, if we take a look at the bar, Obviously, it's a engulfing bar where we have the previous one, two, three, four months of price action engulfed in this one massive red candle. You can see that volume has increased, but it isn't as high as it has been in the past. You can see this month here of December and October had, uh, you know, notably high volume, maybe another third higher volume. And then in the past, we've seen some higher volume as well. So, you know, is it extreme selling? Yeah. Is the range really big? Yeah. But the, the volume isn't as high as it has been in the past. So maybe we will see, start to see some sort of bounce here. Let's break it down to the weekly. So the weekly is really telling just in the sense that this selling really happened all in one week. This past week, obviously, if you're watching the markets, you sort of knew that it was all the catalyst by the coronavirus. If global markets continue to weaken based on, you know, this sort of virus spreading around and, uh, you know, shutting things down, then should we see, you know, that sort of weakening happen? Again, I think this trend line could very well be in play, if not the weekly 200 SMA, which is been strong, strong support in the past. You can see touch there. And then if we were to scroll back, there are certainly more touches. Uh, that being said, just to map out some new key levels, again, this is sort of the low that we went to almost to the penny, a very technical level. Uh, so when we go to a technical level like this, normally and back off hard, it means people are paying attention who are sh in for the short term. Uh, longer term players don't really care as much about the technical levels. If you're a strong seller, then you're just selling and holding your short uh, as a hedge fund or you're getting rid of your longs that you already have. You don't really care about buying or re-entering at a very technical specific level like this. You sort of just care about buying back in when the news and headlines start to say things are looking good again. So that being said, I think this could just be some short-term players who are focused on a very key nuanced level. If we continue lower, obviously we have some supports that we can map out here. Very, uh, if this breaks, which I think will be very key support going into this next week, if 284 or 74 breaks, 281 could be achieved very fast. You can see it's just a blink of an eye away. Anything lower than that, we're looking at 273 just about. You can mark that one off there. In here, we had some support, which is somewhere midway of this range, but you can see touch, touch, and then it was resistance, and then it was support here. So that has some merit to me. That's at 2. Uh, 59.68. Anything lower than that is sort of this level down here, which is below our support uh, rising trend line, this white dotted one here, but definitely noteworthy. That's at 233.95. 
To the upside, uh, let's just map in some areas that we probably got rid of that still had some value. That would certainly be this one here at 302.17. You can see resistance, resistance, uh, and then support once we were above it. Now that we're below it, it will act as resistance, and it's sort of coinciding with that weekly 50 SMA. Anything higher than that, obviously, we'll keep our all-time high up here at uh, 339.08, just go all going off that bubble. We have some support, which will now be resistance as we reapproach it from the uh, underneath at 320.12, and then we'll break it down to the daily to find some more nuanced levels. So one thing I would also like to point out is that all of these gaps that we had and the poor structure we were talking about for weeks and weeks really has been repaired. So this gap here has been repaired, the gaps in here have been repaired, here, here, uh, so on and so forth. All those gaps have been filled. One deceiving thing about this SPY daily chart that I do want to point out is that there's a huge gap here and there's a huge gap here. I'm not sure why TD has shown a big wick to the upside, but this is an unfilled gap. If we quickly go to the 30 minute, with pre-market data off, you can see huge gap here. Let's just mark it off for our own knowledge. Uh, so gap to gap, and then this is a partial gap. And then this is also a partial gap here where the gap didn't quite close all the way, so it still remains. Let's go back to the daily. So I hope just now you can visualize that or pretend to anyways that there's a gap here, gap here, and gap here. Uh, some, again, key levels, this one here at 284.74. If we break down below it, we already talked about what potential areas I'm keeping in mind. Anything to the upside as we continue in the upward direction is 302.17, looks like key resistance. 200 SMA on the daily, this gap fill could potentially act as a magnet. It's about 50% of the way uh, of the move. Let's actually break out the fibs just to sort of check on that. So if we go from our high to our low, uh, these red levels are essentially fib retracements, the key ones being the 38.2, the 50%, and the 61.8, uh, almost coinciding with some of our levels. So the first one we would target is this 306, which is the 38.2. After that, it's sort of the 50% retracement, which is sort of the gap fill area of the chart that we noted on the 30 minute. Anything higher than that is this 61.8 or 318 level, which is very close to the 320 uh, resistance that we will now be facing. That being said, if we do see a bounce happen you know, in the next one, two days up to this level, that to me would indicate a potential short in this area as it's just very emotional buying back into uh, some of these areas. Once you see a reason to go short, like an inverted hammer candle struggling to get through a resistance, maybe we start to see a gap fill reversal. You could put on a short there, whether it be options or shorting some futures, looking for a quick move to the downside. I sort of covered SPY. I'm going to just briefly go through the rest of our indexes here. Obviously, the Q's very similar. The gap is showing here on the chart, so we'll put that one up here to here. So if we get anywhere back into this territory, look for a gap fill to happen from 223 uh, to 229, just about. We'll put in our all-time high, obviously, up here at 237.40. Seven, uh, we didn't quite come down to the same low that we were talking about in the past on SPY here. So starting to see some support happening at the 200 SMA on the daily, which is interesting and certainly noteworthy. Uh, it looks like so for support below us, we sort of have this previous area of resistance in the chart here, acted as support here. So if we see a price uh, you know, flush down to this 193 level, that could act as a potential intraday bounce, boom to the upside. Retesting sort of this area here, we'll definitely add that one in as support based on some previous uh, or some most recent price action. Anything lower, and we sort of have this area down here, sort of coinciding with some of these lows. I think we could probably draw a trend line from here to here, but I don't know how much merit that would hold. Right now, I'm just focused on if we break the 200 decimal, we're probably coming to 193. If this level breaks, then the next key area on the chart is sort of uh, in between here. You can see this previous resistance should act as support at 188. If that flushes, we're looking at 181. Anything to the upside, again, we're sort of looking at more of uh, a retracement move. There's not very, very much uh, structure in here, if you will. We have some lows, obviously, and some price history around this area, 219.54. If we break out the fibs like we did on SPY and go from top to bottom, you can see our 38.2 is at 
213.32, 50 is at 217, and 61.8 is at 222. So almost coinciding with some of these levels here. So look for resistance to happen mostly around this area between 217 to 219, and then 222 to 223.83. So IWM, which I thought was faring pretty well, we're not going to clear the chart entirely just because I think this one's a little bit easier to look at. Price did come down all the way to our support that we had pre-noted on the chart here at 144, 145 just about. Uh, so anything lower than that, let's sort of scrunch it up, see if there's some levels that we've marked. So 125.84, that's quite a ways away. I'm sure there's something in between. Let's check out the weekly. So based on the weekly, we're going to add in this 134 support. You can see it's been support, support, and then same thing here. And it is about midway of our range from if this key break happens to our low here at 125.81. So keep that in mind as a potential target. Otherwise, there's really not much structure. This is very emotional selling and buying both directions here. So coming back into the daily again, just imagine that these are gaps here, here, as well as here. Uh, any resistance to the upside should first be looked at at 154.94, then the 200 SMA. Then we have this sort of area of value on the chart where a lot of time was essentially spent going sideways and consolidating. That's at 158.12 to 159.75. So look to that as to act as like a magnet. If we see any sort of movement to the upside here, if markets really start to recover strong, this is a potential area on the chart that I would be really be interested in seeing whether we hold there, break out above, or get rejected. So if you enjoyed that in-depth analysis of the broad market, then be sure to leave the video a thumbs up. Let's see how many thumbs up we can get. I'm not sure. I haven't really been tracking those recently, but let's see if we can get over 100 on this video. Without further ado, starting off on Apple for our companies, leaving it a little zoomed out so you can see some uh, overall context of where we've been and where we are now. We are essentially right at a support, which we had mapped out at 256.17. So very cool to see that hold up there. Congrats if you got in on the bounce there. Recognize that we're bouncing from a support point. Um, anyways, it looks like there is a huge gap that remains in the chart above us. You can see from here at 304 to 310.31. So that is something overhead. 50 SMA, again, starting to flip over now, but in that general area. Um, should we see some continued bounce? Again, it's really... Uh, there's some very nuanced levels in here that we could pay attention to. It looks like we have some resistance in this area here. You know, we had all these touches here. Once we broke above, this tiny little red hammer acted as support there. That's at 282.1. Anything lower or higher rather than that, and we're looking at sort of that area that I started to point out where there was some uh, data points stacking up. I guess we could call this area in here a resistance as well where we had touch one, two, and then when we were above support, that's at 293.7 anything higher, and we get into that gap fill territory. If we see a continued breakdown to the downside and this low essentially gives, we have to break back down through 268, and then we have to break back down through 256. We're looking at the 200 SMA on the daily chart, which is a key one. Uh, anything lower than that, and we're really looking at 237.54, which comes into play from back here, where we saw resistance turn into support very beautifully with this hammer candle here. Netflix has shown some amazing relative strength to the market. It's continued to do that over the past couple weeks, really, where the market was looking a little shaky. Netflix has continued to essentially just go sideways and make some new highs also. That being said, we have very clear resistance on this. I'm not sure if this is a real wick or if it was something like SPY where this wick isn't really showing true price data. But anyways, our high here at 392.95 is certainly acting as resistance based on the fact that we came up and essentially came back down here. Anyways, consolidating while the market is doing its thing, a very bullish sign in my opinion. If we can break out over this level here at 375.50, I would target this sort of highs up here, anything to the downside, and we break down below this 361.79 level. I'd look to first get an intraday bounce off that 50 SMA. If that gives, we're looking at this sort of area of value on the chart where we've seen some sideways consolidation. That's between 343 and 338. By that time, if we get down into that level, we should be touching sort of the support trend line. If that, uh, if we get a bounce out of that, cool. If we start to consolidate just barely above it, then it looks like it could potentially break where we've had all these touches, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then getting slightly overextended and away from it here. Again, if we get back into it, consolidate just above it, and then see a snap to the downside, it could get pretty ugly. We have some supports mapped out for us, though. 321 to 316, sort of an area of support where we had some lows. Lows, I would even uh, venture to far as far as to say that these 
are significant enough to add into this level here at 321. Looks like there was some resistance, which should act as support from the top side at 316. Anything lower than that, and we're looking at $300 even. Tesla sort of falling out of its bubble with the market. So again, it looks very similar to what we've seen in the market. We're seeing some support at that 50 SMA. We did break the trend line here, but that's on some pretty uh, significant circumstances. Again, the market selling off so hard. Um, I'm not sure what would have happened if the market wasn't selling off and Tesla just sort of pulled back into that trend line. Anyways, to the upside, if we do see a continued push, we're looking at 735, 736, just about as resistance as noted by this line here when we did our very in-depth top-down analysis. That was a key level. If that one is breached to the upside, we have a gap fill to the low of this candle, and that happens at 776.11. Anything higher than that, and we have resistance here very clearly at 817.44, where we have touch one, two, three, was support, and then very clear resistance on this inverted hammer candle here. To the downside, if we see a breakdown below our 50 SMA on the daily, we have support at 588, 546, and then 496. Baba has essentially, I'm, I'm surprised with Baba just being a Chinese-based company, coronavirus happening in China, the, I'm surprised it hasn't sold off much harder than it did. It didn't have an all too bad week. Sure, it did gap down with the market on Monday, but it essentially went flat to sideways and closed right, you know, even higher than the open of that week. So interesting to see if we see continued movement to the upside. Obviously, we have this resistance zone between 211 and 213. You can see we got support here temporarily and then rejection out of that level. So again, might push up into it again, increasing volume here. Anything to the downside, we would have to break down below this sort of uh, 20250 low of this candle and this candle here and then break down below this $200 level. If we do, we're looking at 195.08, and then from there, 188.1. Facebook sort of following the market more closely than Alibaba was. Obviously, we have this gap above that remains, and we have a support just below here at 179.62 that we didn't quite get to. That being said, I'm not gonna sure if it's gonna get touched at all. Obviously, we have a huge green candle. I'm not sure. That's the thing with all of these companies, essentially, is is this candle an oversold bounce or is this a true sign of strength in the market and we're going to see buyers start to pick up again? That is essentially the question. If we do continue to push to the upside, our 200 SMA is going to coincide with this resistance point here at 195. Obviously, you can see we had support, support, and then resistance here once we broke down below it. So that's a key area. Anything higher than that, we're looking at $201 just about from the low of this candle as well as resistance here and very clear resistance at 203 where we had this little double top as well. We covered the 179.62 support to the downside. Anything lower than that, 172, 173, you just call it a whole number. NVIDIA, again, is this an oversold bounce or is it a true sign of strength? No one can really tell yet for sure. We did have, what is this, a dividend here on Thursday and uh, now it looks like we're running into some resistance here at 273.23. If we can continue to push in the upwards direction, we have a resistance point here about halfway into this gap at uh, 281.50 to call a round number, and the gap closes at 286.16, just about the lows of these candles in here. Anything higher than that, we have resistance at 295, and then 315, the all-time high. Uh, any breakdowns below, we're going to first have to break back down through the 50 SMA on the daily, which is coinciding with our 252.81 level. Anything lower than that, we should see support in a, as a, on a retest of this uh, 241 level. Lower, we have this uh, sort of chop zone in here where we have all of these resistance points and then some support, 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 and then almost support here. Microsoft looking very similar to what we had on Apple, actually. Uh, we do have a gap in the chart that remains above now. All of these gaps have essentially filled to the downside, or most of them anyways. And again, the question remains, is this an oversold bounce or is it a true sign of strength? We would have to break back up through this 163.12 level, which was resistance here and then support, support. Uh, we would have to break back up through that and retest our sort of 50 SMA and uh, 167.50 level if we were to consider this sort of a stronger move to the upside, anything higher than that. And I would sort of just target more of this area, 174.13. Uh, I wouldn't really put too much emphasis into this one here since you can see that there was really no data points as prices fell back through it. To the downside, if we continue to fall, we're looking at support to come into play between 157 and 155. You can see that's sort of where we had a gap in the chart, which is now filled, uh, but again, lower than that. And we're looking to retest the low of Friday, which is at 152 just about. Anything lower than that, 
we have this level here at 146.50, which is going to coincide with that 200 SMA on the daily. Amazon completely crumbling and giving back all of the gap up that we experienced on earnings, which again, we, we were thinking it wouldn't happen all in one day, but it did happen all in one week. So take that for what you will. Uh, let's remove some of this garbage. And you can see, obviously, we gapped down below our 200 SMA, but now we're above it. So if we retest that to the downside, it should act as a temporary intraday support. Keep that level in mind. It also sort of coincides with some of these lows in here, which I will mark off as support. Boom, got it. Touch, 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 touch. All these touches, obviously. That's at 1852.62. Anything lower than that, and we're looking at a move back down essentially to the lows here at 1815.50. Anything lower than that, and it gets much worse down to 1737, just about. To the upside, we have resistance here at 1900. Obviously, we talked about that being a very key one since it's such a whole and round number. Anything after that is our next sort of poke above that we experienced here at 1916. 50 SMA is slightly above that, and then we sort of have some emotional uh, areas in the chart, as noted by this wick here and a new resistance point to add in at 1961.11. Anything higher, we are mapped out. So two grand, obviously a psychological huge number and resistance there. Anything higher, 2024, 2054, so on and so forth as we continue in the upwards direction. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap up this week's episode of the Weekly Watch List. Again, what's going to happen? No one can really say for sure. Are we experiencing an oversold bounce or is this a stronger sign that buyers are essentially stepping in at a very nuanced key level? We will have to wait and find out. If you're interested in receiving those free swing scan newsletter, then go ahead and sign up at the first link in the description. Again, we're on Instagram and we do have a Discord. Check us out and I wish you a green trading week.